Hello again and welcome to another session with the Cyber Professor. Today we will be talking about one important aspect of operating systems and that is memory management. In an effort to do a recap of the course map that we designed for the review of the operating systems topic, we covered the introduction to operating systems a few weeks ago then we move to the process or management discussion and we spent a couple of weeks talking about the importance of the operating uh, of the process or management responsibilities that are given to the operating system. Now we are ready to discuss the memory management component of the responsibilities of the operating system. And this section number three, memory management, will be covered in two different videos. This becomes the first uh, video in which we are going to review memory management. In an upcoming video, we are going to conclude our review of memory management. For today, we are going to cover chapter two of your textbook, and that is early memory management systems. The learning objectives for today are understanding the four early memory allocation schemes, understanding the concepts of best fit and first fit. Then we are going to cover the concepts of deallocation and compaction. And finally, we are going to discuss the problems with the early memory allocation schemes. In a summary, what are we talking about again? The answer is depicted here on the left, we are talking about the early memory management schemes. That is the topic of this video. For an upcoming video that is going to be posted next week, we will discuss the alternative memory allocation systems. But again, for this week, we are going to discuss these four early memory management schemes. The first one being the single user contiguous. The next one being the fixed partitions. The third one being the dynamic partitions. And the last one being the relocatable dynamic partitions. The characteristics of these four early memory management systems include that the entire program needs to be loaded into memory. Keyword, entire. Also, the programs need to be stored contiguously within the memory space. Keyword, contiguously. And finally, the jobs or the programs need to remain in memory until the entire job is completed. Again, for next week, we are going to cover the alternative memory allocation systems, which includes the page, demand page, segmented, and finally segmented demand paged. So for today, the first uh, early memory management system is the single user contiguous and the characteristics include the not efficient use of memory space, the poor performance being really slow, and the single job or program reserve the entire and contiguous memory space. So if we take a look at the random access memory block in our computer system, we notice that one job, a single job, utilizes or occupies the entire memory space and requires contiguous memory space. If a second job comes into play and wants to use some of the memory in our computer system, it is rejected. The request is rejected because the job number one, which is depicted here on the right, is utilizing the entire memory space in our computer system. As you can tell, this scheme is not practical anymore. Number two is the fixed partitions memory allocation scheme. And the characteristics include the creation of partitions within the memory space, allowing for more than one job to be in memory at the same time. Partitions are stored in a partition memory table, which is managed by the operating system, to keep track of memory usage. Finally, the size of the partitions is static, unless the system is rebooted. Following the same example of our random access memory block, or RAM, we notice that now we have divided 
the memory space in our computer system in smaller blocks called partitions. And those are depicted in different colors within the random access memory or RAM within your computer system. Each partition has a different size. For the sake of this ex example, we have sizes that are chosen arbitrarily. 40K, 130K, 60K, and so forth. So we see that job number one comes into play and utilizes the first partition in our random access memory, the one with the 40K size. Job number two utilizes the second one, 130K. Job number three utilizes a partition with size of 140K. Job number four utilizes the partition with 160K in size. Job number five, the one with 20K in size. And finally, job number six, the one with 180K in size. Here comes the partition memory table, which is the way that the operating system keeps track of the memory allocation given to different jobs. The partition memory table consists of partition size, meaning the size of the block within memory. In this case, the 40K is depicting the blue partition on my right, and it's being utilized by job number one, which is in the access column in the partition memory table. And the status of this partition is busy because job number one is utilizing the memory space in the 40K partition. The memory address is a, um, the address within the RAM that the operating system refers to to find partition number one. Partition number two in this table is depicted with a size of 130K and references the light blue rectangle or partition here on the right. As you can see, the second row in my partition memory table indicates that job number two has taken this partition and indeed job number two is utilizing the 130k block or partition in our RAM. And it's busy because job number two is utilizing this partition. Job num uh, the partition size of 60k which is depicted right here on the right uh, doesn't have a job assigned to it and that is why the access column is empty and the status of this partition is free meaning any job that could fit in this 60k partition can easily utilize this partition at any point given in time so this is just three rows of our partition memory table of course you will see additional rows to depict all the other partitions within our random access memory for the sake of this example we are keeping it simple and just displaying the first three rows in our partition memory table now comes dynamic partitions that is the third early memory management scheme that we are discussing the characteristics are as follows, still kept in contiguous blocks. Jobs are only given as much memory as they request when they are loading into memory. So here is a, there is an advantage to it. The jobs are only requiring the amount of memory within the module of the job that is actually needed to perform or execute the instructions that are part of the job. Significant improvement because memory is not wasted within a partition. It introduced a problem, however, and the problem is fragmentation. There is internal and external fragmentation. They both waste memory. It works very well for the first set of jobs that are loaded into memory. However, as those jobs complete and memory is deallocated, the fragmentation occurs within your memory space. So here we have the example of the random access memory with three partitions, one depicted with 20K, the second one with 130K, and the last partition with 40K. Job number one decides to take the one with 20K, job number two, 130, and job number three, 40K. Now, this allocation of different partitions can be completed in two different ways. The first one being the first fit allocation and the second one being the best fit allocation. For the first fit allocation, the characteristics are that it finds the first partition that has sufficient memory space, it does not take into account how much memory can be wasted in the partition. It just goes out and finds the first partition that has enough memory space to complete the job. 
So following the example of our random access memory block, or RAM, we have four partitions depicted here. Job number three requires 15K of memory space but it's taking a partition that is 130k in size. Imagine 115k of space, the difference between 130 and 15, is wasted. Here comes job number one. 125k is needed to execute the instructions that are part of job number one, and it is taking the partition that is 140k. This job could easily fit in partition number one that is 130k and reducing the amount of memory that is wasted because the difference between 130 and 125 is just 5k so we could be utilizing memory in a more efficient way if job number one utilizes this partition instead of this one. Here comes job number two it requires 135k to execute the instructions that are part of the code in job number two. However, it is utilizing a partition that is 160k in size. It, this job can easily use the partition that has 140k in size. However, by utilizing the one that is 160k, more memory is wasted. Now, why are we wasting so much memory? because with the first fit allocation these jobs are not thinking about which partition is the smallest one that can utilize can be utilized to perform the instructions that are part of these jobs it just goes out and finds the quicker uh, the uh, partition in a, in a quick way the one that will be able to uh, provide enough space to perform the instructions that are part of the job on the other hand best fit allocation moving to the right looks for the smallest partition that can accommodate the job it is efficient but slow in performance so let's take a look at the random access memory block that is depicted here on the right job number one requires 125k of memory so using best fit allocation rather than jumping and using the uh, partition that has 140k in size it goes to the smallest partition that can accommodate the job and that is the 130k partition. Job number two comes into play and requires 135k. Notice that instead of utilizing the partition with 160k that can easily fit the requirements of job number two, it goes out and looks for the smallest partition, in this case 140k, which is the smallest partition that can accommodate the size of this job. On the other hand, and finally, job number three requires 15K of memory. And instead of using the partition that is 160K size in size that can easily uh, meet the needs of job number three, because it is using the best fit allocation, it goes out and finds the partition with a 20K in size and utilizing, utilizes that partition to complete the job. So this method of memory allocation, the best fit allocation, is efficient because we are not wasting as much memory as the first fit allocation scheme. However, it is slow in performance because the cross-referencing of the job memory need and the available uh, memory allocation takes time and takes uh, processing power on, in our computer system so the operating system is a little bit slower in performance as far as the uh, allocation of space in memory. What happens when a job completes and does not require memory any longer? The allocation comes into play and this is an important concept that you need to understand. The allocation is defined as the release of memory space after a job has been completed. Important concept for you to remember. For fixed partitions, it is a simple, straightforward process. As you may remember, with the fixed partition scheme, we have a single job taking pretty much the entire memory space. So as soon as that job completes, it's a matter of just removing that job from memory 
and the deallocation of memory is simple and straightforward. For dynamic partitions, on the other hand, you have multiple jobs being in memory at the same time. They don't finish at the same time, so the deallocation of memory happens at different times, producing a result of fragmentation within your memory. It is a bit more complex of a process, and three different scenarios can take place. Joining two free blocks, joining three free blocks, or deallocating an isolated block. The final and fourth uh, scheme that we are going to study today is the relocatable dynamic partitions. And the characteristics are as follows. It addresses some of the concerns related to fragmentation and demand. Memory Manager relocates programs to gather together all of the empty blocks and compact them to make one block of memory to accommodate waiting jobs, addressing the demand that is part of the results of fragmentation. Compaction of memory, or defragmentation, is performed by the operating system to reclaim fragmented space. Compaction is not an easy task as all programs in memory must be relocated to place them in contiguous memory locations and all tables must be updated. By compacting and relocating the memory manager, optimizes the use of memory and improves throughput, but requires more overhead. Finally, we study four different early memory management schemes. The question is, are these memory management schemes viable for today's computer systems? The answer is no, they are not viable, they are very slow, and the performance is extremely poor. The problems with these methods can be summarized as follows important for you to remember. They require for the entire program or job to be loaded into memory. These four early memory management schemes require contiguous locations in memory. Perhaps if we could divide the jobs into smaller chunks and only load the smaller chunks in non-contiguous memory locations, we can improve the efficiency of the memory management within our computer systems. That will be the topic of next week's discussion. During our upcoming video, we are going to talk about the alternative memory management schemes that can be used to improve the use of memory. Until next time, thank you.